Across the world, slaves work and sweat and build and suffer. Slaves in Pakistan may have made the shoes you're wearing and the cafe you stand on. Slaves in the Caribbean may have put sugar in your kitchen and toys in the hands of your children. In India, they may have sewn the shirt on your back and polished the ring on your finger. They have paid nothing. People get rich by using slaves, and when they are finished with their slaves, they just throw these people away. Well, the words that I would use to describe the feelings that I had uh, when I was uh, a modern-day slave was uh, frustrated, uh, angry, and confused. Uh, frustrated because I didn't know what my future was going to be. Angry towards my traffickers for them to have to uh, be doing those kind of things uh, to me. And confused in that I didn't know who to trust. I have two brothers and two sisters and I'm an orphan. My journey to America began after losing both of my parents and a long suffering from poverty. What you have is individuals who are not educated and when you have uh, somebody promising to give them everything that they could ever need in life, it's very enticing. In Kalingalinga, people die daily from easily preventable diseases. Approximately 70% of the people survive on less than a dollar and one meal per day. The house I lived in was made from mud bricks and had no electricity or running water. When I joined the Zambian Boys Choir in 1997, I was looking for a new direction. At church, I made new friends and found spiritual joy that overshadowed my physical suffering and devastating loss of my parents and older sister. In 1998, my dream came true when a non-profit American Christian organization based in Sherman, Texas, promised to build schools in Zambia in return for my work. And so that's uh, one way that traffickers uh, uh, prey on, on some of these uh, victims. Unfortunately, my dreams were shattered as I became a slave, singing four to seven concerts a day, asking for love offerings, selling CDs, and having no control over my life. My passport was withheld from me and I was made to believe if I escaped, I'd be caught and deported because no one would be interested in helping me. I was taught to sing and smile at all times, even in time of sickness or exhaustion. If I inquired about money or school, Bible scriptures on obedience and respect were embellished to shame me. If we did not sing, the choir manager cut off the gas with the stove so we could not cook. There are so many things that do happen in life and then you question yourself why certain things could happen to you but after many things like that happen then you begin to realize that it's not fair and it's really just what you make of it as a person that really counts uh, in life uh, because there are, there are many temptations you know sometimes you you're drawn to want to do certain things and uh, until you come to realize that nothing can really please you uh, then you begin to put your focus into things that really do matter in life, such as uh, relationships with other people. I would say my biggest aha moment was just realizing the situation in the U.S. because I never even imagined that we could have such great atrocities here. We're a free country and we celebrate liberty and slavery ended hundreds or a hundred years ago and that's marvelous and amazing but it still exists without people even noticing it's still here there are more slaves now in the world than in, in the entire combined history of the transatlantic slave trade and so that's this huge problem and i didn't even realize and i never imagined it was going on around me the feeling of being a slave is not fun uh, because you're being held uh, against your will uh, you don't have the freedom to uh, walk out, you don't have the freedom to communicate with uh, your family members, uh, you don't have the resources to be able to uh, get yourself out of that situation if you need to. Uh, so it's very uh, debilitating and the thing that we have to keep in mind is that people who are trafficked, most of them have left uh, family members back home in their countries, uh, some of them have, uh, have kids and so to know that you can't help or be able to provide food for your, for your for your children, or even be able to tell your 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 parents that you're fine, uh, it can be very de devastating. 
My hope is that with Hagar's Hope, we can connect with other churches and have a broader impact. And that's something I've been working on is connecting with people from other churches because it's hard to have one church keep having to give all the time because there are so many victims and they can be rescued in you know just huge busts all at once. And so it's important that we're able to connect with other Christians, other believers, so that we can have a network and a support network for victims. And it also helps the victims know that there's a broader community that cares about them and that loves them. The key steps to uh, healing is, uh, first of all, having people that are there to help you through the process once you've been rescued as a, as a modern day slave, uh, because it's very difficult. First of all, when you're in, in a country, a developed country such as the United States, uh, you're going to need some funds, you're going to need an uh, emotional support system. And once you do have those things, then uh, you can begin that process. I've talked so much about how hard it is to work with victims and to be aware of their stories, but at the same time it's extremely rewarding. I'm happiest when I know that I've been able to do something to help someone else, even if it's just in a small way. That really helps me see that there is good in the world and that things can move forward and that people can people can change and that we have a connection. I, ha I had a lot of problems uh, trusting other people because first of all you're coming out of a situation where you've been used for uh, two three years and then for you to come out of that and then start building your relationships with other people you're kind of cautious in what you want to tell them and then in a lot of cases, you also wonder what that person is really looking for. Uh, you have no idea what their intentions could be. God does see. He does see the victims of trafficking. He knows what's going on, but we don't see. And part of forming Hagar's Hope was to help the church see what's happening and to see that there is a huge need here to help these victims of slavery. It's very sad to know that this kind of thing happens today. We have to make sure that we are doing everything that we can to make sure that it, it doesn't continue because if it continues, it's just going to multiply and the bigger the problem becomes, the harder it's going to be for us to, uh, to resolve it.